Season's Creepings, everyone. Today I have for you my gothic putz house stocking hangers and some cool gothic stockings as well. I'm super excited for this project. I really like how they turned out. Pretty much turned out exactly how I wanted, if not a little better than how I wanted. And I can't wait to show you, so stay tuned and watch the video. And let me know what you think down below, or if you have any other ideas for some cool, creepy crafts. These are just some Dollar Tree putz houses with a little space for an LED tea light candle to go underneath. While I wait for my putz houses to dry, I'm going to prepare the bases of the stocking hanger by adding a little bit of clay foam, kind of to look like snow falling over the edges. I also added clay foam to the houses to act as snow as well. I know there's some like chunky paint you can buy that does like a snow effect. This is just what I had on hand, um, and I didn't want to go to the store to buy that fake snow that I'd probably only use once. Here I'm just adding the LED tea lights to the putz house base. To make it possible for me to turn on and off my putz house, I'm just adding magnets to the stocking hanger base, which is actually slightly magnetic because it's metal, and the putz houses themselves just to make them stay on without falling off easily. Here I'm just adding glitter glue and rubbing it all around uh, finger paint style to my fake snow. It has that very winter wonderland effect. Now's the time I get to futz with my putzes. I'm sorry, I will go home. You didn't think I forgot about adding glitter glue to the houses, did you? In future years, I'm going to have a more permanent base that I'll make for my spooky village. But for right now, empty Amazon boxes are perfect. I decided I wanted a kind of wintry background for my spooky village, 
So I went with the old felt covering cardboard <laughs> and then adding snowflakes routine that I, I don't know, I just came up with. I thought it would work and I think it does. Time for some finishing touches. For my stockings, I'm just using the Batwing stockings I made last year, inspired by Rachel Mortician's video. I'll link that down below. I'm just using it to trace out a new pattern, because I don't think I saved my old pattern. Um, and this actually ends up being way bigger than my original ones, which is not a bad thing, because they were kind of tiny. But you'll see a size difference later when I compare both uh, last year's stockings to this year's Batwing stocking. I cut out my stocking out of my purple velvet that I use for the tree skirt and for my tree topper and I also cut out lining out of black felt for a little bit of stability. Then I sewed my stocking right sides together for both the fashion fabric and for the lining and trimmed the edges before inserting them together. You only want to flip the fashion fabric inside out because you want the raw edges of the lining to be on the inside facing the raw edges of the fashion fabric. And of course, I need some spooky fur trim for the top of my batwing stocking. I pinned and sewed this fur to the top edge of my stocking only sewing along the top edge and then I'm going to flip it inside out and glue it down because uh, I'm lazy. forget the little strap that you hang the stocking from, so I just made that out of some braid cord and then hot glued that in place, of course.
Please. You helping? Uh-huh.